the other day in my office, a woman was experiencing fear and anxiety involving a stressful situation at work. Now, after some digging, I helped her uncover her underlying belief that she was not good enough. And that caused her to get overly stressed about this kind of situation. Now, this original belief was formed from an incident that happened playing sports years ago as a teenager. Now, for years, I worked with adults dealing with issues such as anxiety, addictions, and fears developed from these types of sports failures. With almost every one of them, we end up identifying and clearing a belief that came from a bad experience during junior high and high school. Now, let's use my own story for example. I started playing baseball at age 8. Up until the age of 12, I was an above average player getting tons of kudos and more playing time than most of my teammates. And during those years, I was always the smallest kid on the team, but I made up for it by using my never give up attitude and mental toughness. I actually made our league all-star team and of course was the smallest on that team. I knew I was smaller than the others, but it didn't matter to me. I thought I was six feet tall because my stats spoke for me. As I kept playing as a 13 and 14 year old, everyone else got even taller and I didn't. I began to think of myself as small. When the outfielders moved in on me, I started telling myself things like, I must be a weak hitter. In practice, I would always amaze my coach at how I could hit the ball to the fences. But then I had this feeble little swing during the games. I remember actually getting thrown out at first base with a solid hit to center field. It would have been a base hit by any other player, but the center fielder was playing in so close that he got me out, and I was totally embarrassed. For years after that, I had dreams of running to first base, like I was trying to run in mud or quicksand, and the fielders would always throw me out at first. And this stuck with me for a long time and it did a number on my psyche in many areas of my life for years and caused me to have small thinking. Flash forward three decades later to a time when I'm managing a $50 million express transportation op operation. And I'm conducting a meeting with all the employees to explain to them how we all have to overhaul the, the way we do things and adopt a set of best practices that came out of a consulting firm's recommendations. My employees were extremely unhappy, unhappy to say the least. They actually started heckling me, deriding the company, and actually became disrespectful in this meeting. Now right at that moment, I got those same exact feelings I had when I got thrown out at first base from center field 30 years earlier. You see in the picture here? I actually shrunk down in that same posture of embarrassment. I ended up losing control of the meeting. I stopped being a leader and I lost a lot of respect. I went home that night and said to myself, never again. The next day I began a quest to learn about mental toughness, to eliminate those old programs and to transform my life. You see, participation in sports, it's an amazing opportunity for kids to learn powerful life skills such as discipline, determination, focus, goal setting, achievement, and I can go on and on. It's also a minefield of potential problems that create limiting beliefs that can haunt your child for a very long time and affect all aspects of their life. It's up to you. Give them that choice, the tools, the resources, and mental toughness so they don't have to go through that. I'm Craig Sigal. Go to sportsmentaltoughness.com to get your free video training and guided visualization mp3 on how to perform under pressure. I'm Craig Sigal, the Mental Toughness Trainer.